live from San Jose, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley. It's the Cube, covering Hadoop Summit 2016. Brought to you by HortonWorks. Now, here are your hosts. John Furrier. Welcome back everyone. We are here live in Silicon Valley and actually in San Jose for Hadoop Summit 2016. This is Silicon Angle Media's The Cube, our flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host, George Gilbert, Wikibon analyst. Our next guest is Arun Murthy, who's the founder and, and architect at Hortonworks. Welcome back to The Cube, great to see uh, you. Good pleasure. Um, I know we don't have a lot of time because you got another hard stop, another keynote, big things going on here. Great show so far, day one of Absolutely. three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage you. from The Cube. Um, what's going on? We're seeing a lot of change and a lot of acceleration open source. DockerCon last week, mm -hmm. container madness, really, it was like Burning Man for developers. It was like, <laughs> you had geeks there, you had businesses, big names, yeah. you had VCs circling the hallways. Here you got big name partners, yeah. uh, like Microsoft on stage, HPE, IBM, and yeah. you got developers, same deal, data scientists. What is the trend of containers and this Hadoop ecosystem, certainly Spark Summit, again, that was exploding. What is it telling us? Um, I think what's telling us is, you know, uh, from where, from where, where I sit, I've spent. As a community, we've spent 10 years in Hadoop, which means we spent the first 10 years making up the plumbing, whether it's Spark, whether it's you know Kafka, whether it's you know Hadoop, whether it's Hive, right? Uh, what's really, what, what really enterprises are looking for now, now is you guys have all this sort of, you have all the Lego pieces, right? Now we got to be able to put them together in a pre-configured way, so you can actually, you, you don't buy the Lego pieces anymore. We, we've got the Lego pieces, we've been selling it. The question is, now can you buy a toy that's been put? put it, you know, think of it as a credit fraud application. It's a customer 360 application. We have all this data. We clearly, the enterprise understands that the modern app is going to be a data app, right? I mean, it's fundamentally going to be driven by data, whether it's predictive analytics, whether it's you know, uh, you know, forward-looking stuff. So, given that we have all this data in the platform, we now have to make sure that we build the app, we, we, we make the platform easy for people to develop the apps. One, and more importantly, get you know, get the apps off the shelf rather than have to put the pieces together. It's interesting, you know, to your point about data value. Peter Birch just asked Rob Beard about valuation, and George doing a lot of research on that with yeah. the Wikibon team. Linked sold to Microsoft for $26 billion. It's essentially a Rolodex. <laughs> it's a social network. No, Absolutely. but the data set is valuable. Absolutely. And now and now we're seeing customers realize, wow, it's not the database or the scaffolding of the technology. Right. It's the data, it's the data itself, exactly. How is that changing the game right now? Because what does that mean? Because how do people get in that? Everyone wants to be in that position. I mean, $26 billion for LinkedIn yeah. shows the step up change that data can do in creating value. Absolutely, and at some point, you know, I don't know how much longer we're away from a point where enterprises are going to start listing the data assets on the balance sheet, right? Think about it, it's, you know, you can always buy real estate, you can all, I mean, it's, it's money, but you could really, you really cannot generate the data. If you don't have data, you don't have it. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, you can go back, um, you know, you had software running 50 years ago, that software itself is not valuable, but IBM trades from 1950 are still valuable. If you can do analytics on that, you know, it's the same vintage, but it's data versus everything else. 10 years from now, they're going to watch this video and say, hey, back in 2016, yeah, exactly. <laughs> before they had cars yeah. on the internet flying in the air, and yeah. Arun Murthy said there might be data on the balance sheet someday. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Arun, let's, let's continue to talk about applications. Yeah. Um, for apps normally to um, emerge out of, a, out of an ecosystem, there's a consistent platform. Right. But the ecosystem, the Apache Hadoop ecosystem's growing so fast. Um, how do you sort of prescribe subsets of a platform as appropriate for different types of apps? Mm -hmm. And is there a forking with other distro vendors? I, I, the way I look at this is, you know, we could spend the next 10 years trying to standardize on everything, right? Or we could go solve business problems right now, which exists today, right? You guys saw what Progressive said on stage. Uh, they've been able to pass on $562 million in insurance savings to their customers using data. Now that gets people's attention, right? It means you and I are paying less for our car insurance, yeah, yeah. right? I think what we want, what, what, what I see and what we see as a community is, rather than trying to spend all this effort trying to you know, standardize for the next 15 years, let's make it trivial for somebody to 
take an existing set of technologies, today it's Spark, tomorrow it'll be Flink, it doesn't really matter, right? Take Spark, take Storm, take Hive, put it together as a, as a credit fraud application, which is what we demo today morning, put it in the marketplace and let somebody download that application, and it's not going to be perfect, it's only going to be 85%, right? Allow people to modify the last 15%, but go run, right? So everybody can take the 85%, modify to their use case, and then go run. And as long as you have enough people putting up these in a marketplace, where and I can download and run, rather than, today I have to put up, pull up Kafka, I got to pull up Storm, I got to pull up Spark, I got to stand them up, wire them together, that's painful. I mean, we cannot train people fast enough, especially to your point, which is these technologies are moving. I'd rather have customers like Progressive download an app, uh, from a marketplace, run it, and then modify the last for the last fifty percent. So this is a different go-to-market model. I mean, it dictates a different go-to-market model from what we saw, you know, traditionally in packaged apps. Um, well, first on PCs, and then even the bigger ones where. Um, the the change was to the business process, make it map you know to the application or <laughs> right. or the other way around. Absolutely and that was painful, but so it wasn't all that repeatable. So I think to our point, what people have realized is it's not about the application; it's about the data, right? So if you can if if you can deal with the fact that you have the data, and you, you look at data as your as your permanent permanent asset then you can modify the application. It's not the other way around. You don't want to get into a world where every application hold, holds its data hostage, which means the which means the modification to one app will you know, screw up 25 others, right? If you can look at data as an asset, and then you can modify the apps rather than having to go the other way around. Could you say, um, uh, Jim Kabilia said at IBM said something interesting about this. He said in the old world, we had um, process and then the data came out of it. Um, exactly. And, and the process could evolve. Here he's like saying um, we have data, data and the process, and the process, can process evolve. emerges. Exactly. And so, but it means the app is always evolving. And, and, and that's a reality, which means, which is why we have to embrace technologies like Docker. It allows us to evolve the app faster. So you might have one version of your data, yeah. you might have one version of your metadata. If the data changes, you could build up a new version, right, with a new pipeline, a new, and you can store both the sets of data, both the data sets anyway, because it's economically viable on Hadoop. You store both the data sets, you run the old version of the app with one set of Docker containers, and you run another version of the app with a different set of Docker containers. And you can manage all of that consistently through Hadoop and Yarn, because you're running all these Docker containers, and you get consistent metadata and security with aspects like Ranger and Atlas, right? So the, if you put the, all of these together, um, that's one. The other way to look at this is it allows us, um, as a community and as a and as a and as an ecosystem, to move to deliver value to the customer on day one. To deliver I'm sorry. value to the customer on day one, because right now they spend four weeks trying to put Storm and Spark and Hive and everything else together, right? If you can get a pre-configured set of that out, then and you can always customize it, but you're not starting from scratch every single time. So, um, would it be fair? Would it be fair to say that uh, your favored go-to-market partners would be the big SIs, who? Absolutely, and you know we're starting to see some of that too in the open source community, right? So you're looking at uh, technologies like Metron. So Metron is an app. It's an app which is for cyber security, right? That app is something pretty soon you'll be able to download and run on your existing HTTP cluster, right? And by the way, when I mean an app, it's not just the technologies. It's in, it's everything, including the user experience around the app. So you can actually go in and look at who is creating a de denial of service attack, who is doing you know fraud. You want to be pack. You want to be able to pack the underlying te data technologies, right, and the sort of the user experience around it, and, and send it as, as one, we call it an assembly, so that's an assembly for us, right? And the nice part is now you'll be able to scale that assembly independent, you know, as a whole. You don't have to go scale HBase and Storm and Hive, you scale the credit fraud app or, or Metron itself. So one, one last question, um, you talked about containers and sort of continuous, you know, delivery, yeah. um, for agility, but it sounds like also the machine learning component Absolutely. is, that's what's going to directly take the emergent data Absolutely. out of, the, emergent logic out of the data. Exactly, and and that's really what we want. I mean, if you look at, if you really look at what, what, we, what we see as a modern data app, 
predictive analytics and machine learning are really key part of it. I mean, yes, we've got the bread and butter use case of BI and reporting, but those are stuff you know we've seen in the past, right? The fact that we can now do machine learning at scale using technology like Spark is really, really important as we bring these new sort of breeds of data and new, new breeds of applications on board. Arun, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. I know you're tight on time, but I want you to just quickly summarize the theme this year from your perspective. I know that yeah. you know, it's energizing the enterprise readiness, all that good yeah. stuff. You know, technically, where are the core communities that you guys are actively working in right now? If you could give us a list of the top three to five communities yeah. um, that, that's, uh, around the Hadoop Summit ecosystem? What are the, five, the top five um, or I top say, three? I would say you know, continue to drive innovation in the core Hadoop platform. Mm -hmm. I love you to build all these apps, you know, very simple APIs around it. Security and governance um, is super important. Um, you know, you can't you know you can't have security without governance, and you can't have governance without security, right? So that's why tying technologies like Ranger and Atlas, Ranger for security, Atlas for metadata is super important. Machine learning continues to be huge, right? Uh, Spark continues to be one of the you know sort of shining shining lights there. Streaming analytics is big. Um, streaming ingest is big. So there's we want to sort of eliminate the distinction between you know data in motion, data rest. You want to be able to join both of these data sources simultaneously. So that's why NIFI is so important for us. Um, and last but not least, I'd say continue to drive all the you know SQL set of things because for the next, it, it's been for it's been on for 30 years. It's going to be on for another. Where does Yarn fit in all that? So Yarn is going to be that platform where which we can make it really easy for you to develop the apps and run Dockerized apps on your Hadoop platform. So you can actually access the data and access all of the resources in there. Last not least is of course cloud. We spend a lot of attention and time on the cloud. Um, you know, cloud. another big one. Yeah. So making all data everywhere, IoT certainly exactly. going to be around. Okay, great. Yeah. Arun Murphy, founder and architect at HortonWorks here at Hadoop Summit. Again, congratulations. Ten years of Hadoop. Uh, of great celebration going on. Big party tonight, Think a lot of Absolutely. things happening. Yeah. We'll see you around, have a cocktail later. It's theCUBE, live here in San Jose in Silicon Valley, watching theCUBE. I'm John Furrier and George Gilbert. We'll be right back with more CUBE.